Escaping. Does that seem like an impossible task? My overact of imagination and my love for creating characters combined and created my escape, writing. I'm a creative writer, and I write for others for the same reason I read books, to discover new worlds. I read fictional books so I can side with the characters and if I care see through them with events I'd never experience in person. However, I read mystery books to work out the story as I go along, but between you and me, I'll read them again so I know what's coming. David Williams, J.K. Rowling, and Paula Hawkins. Three authors with three different targeted audiences. Williams writes for children, Rowling writes for mainly teenagers, and Hawkins writes for young adults. An author will connect to their characters to be able to sympathize with them and make their own writing better. When a reader then picks up that book, they will often choose a favorite character. This could be for any reason, but personally, if I think a character has some traits similar to me, I'll favor them over others. Connections between author and story, and story and reader are crucial. If an author isn't enjoying the book they're writing, what's the point in writing it? I've asked myself this very same question. I've written stories where I wasn't sure what my end goal was, and I was starting to dislike the words written on the page. For a particular story I later entitled Keys, this is exactly how I felt. That was until my friend read it. Her eyes lit up as she took in every detail of what I'd written. Upon finishing, she turned to me and asked me the question every creative writer will ever dread to hear. What happens next? What was I meant to tell her? That I was about to delete everything? I just couldn't do it. I used her positivity as motivation to change the story into my vision. This is a short extract from it. I gave her a small hug and walked over to the, to the guitar she put down earlier. It's a shame you can't play. I looked over at the piano and approached it with caution, as if, as if it had suddenly grown poisonous. I sat back down on the piano stool and stared at the keys. Then I heard it, the soft strumming of a guitar playing familiar chords and a soft voice singing familiar lyrics, a familiar chorus. I'm not going to write you a love song because you asked for it because you need one. It was a simple love story about two girls and their connection through music. Writing stories with the genre of romance helped me feel like somebody else. They helped me feel special. Like I said, the most important part of creative writing is a reader enjoying it, and I was curious what some of my friends thought about my story writing. Naturally, I asked a few of my friends to make some comments about it, and this is what they said. You have this way with putting words together that makes it so wonderful to read. You're good at catching and playing with people's emotions. These words fill me with happiness. It's not every day you get to hear your closest friends compliment you. And then there's my older sister. I love her to pieces, but sometimes she really annoys me. Recently, however, she's been complimenting me on my writing. This may be because I have a short story in a published book, or because I have a poem coming out soon in a teenage poetry anthology. I'd like to think she brags about it. Teen fiction writer John Green has a unique way of connecting with his fans. On his Tumblr page, he answers anonymous messages like any normal person. We treat authors, celebrities, and actors as a higher power, but they're just normal people. They go shopping, go on dates, fall over, sneeze, and even go to the toilet. These authors mesmerize us, make us cry, make us question everything, yet it's just words on a page. We know what the characters are feeling, yet they're almost completely fictional. These words send me to another universe, away from my fears, away from my worries, and just away. These words make me feel loved and protected. These words help me escape. Thank you to the authors, and thank you for listening. Well done. Oh. How do you feel? Glad I got it out of the way. You're glad you got it out of the way. You've been waiting all day, all yeah. day, and you're finally here. So um, you, you do write so well. How do you... I mean, we asked the idea, the, the, question, the, the obvious question for a creative person, where do the ideas come from? Where do your yeah. ideas come from? Um, generally, I, I find I can write just out of nowhere, but generally I find that my ideas and my inspiration derive from if I have a really strong emotion. 
And then I kind of use that emotion and then I, I wrote, once wrote an eight page story because I just had like this one tiny little fleck of inspiration from an emotion. What was the feeling. emotion that drove, drove that um, eight pages? A bit of annoyance, but like mainly love, and it was just like a story. Annoyance, of love, it's, it's all, it's the same yeah. sort of thing, really. You're, you're married one day, you'll know what that's like. Um, and and when, what, what emotion do you want your readers, what do you want them to do, as, uh, to feel as a result of reading your stuff? Um, well, like I said, I, I love to write romance, and that's kind of my thing. Um, and I just kind of generally want people to feel like they can read what I'm writing and they can relate to it and they can feel the emotion the characters are feeling. They can feel, they can feel, they feel the emotions of the characters. So you create a genuine feeling in them by made up characters yeah. on the page. That's, a, that's quite a skill. Um, if you, and do you ever have them, people that you know, like family members and friends, do you ever build them into your stories sort of subtly? Um, Subtly, no. Oh, obviously. Oh, shall yes. I rephrase that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you ever written about your mum? <laughs> Actually, not, not my mum. Sorry, mum. Um, <laughs> not yet. No. Um, <laughs> but I have written, I usually write about my friends just because they're kind of, I'm not, I'm not particularly good at making my own characters. And so okay. I tend to use my friends and then I'll, I'll use my friends. As so if your friend's having a really bad time, that's good. That's good for you. That, that, that's a little <laughs> that, that, makes me sound, that makes me sound a bit mean, but yeah. to be honest, a bit, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. And if, if your final question, if you have had, let's say, J.K. Rowling mm -hmm. in the room and you were, you were able to ask her a question, mm -hmm. what, what would you ask her? Just how would you do it? Because she's such, she's such an amazing writer and she's such a massive inspiration to me. And there's, I know there's a teacher in the room who absolutely loves J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Um, and when I told her that I had her in my speech, she was like, yes. And she gave me a heart. She's there, back there, <laughs> just smiling. Yes. Um, yes. And just, I think I'd just be like, yeah, how, how do you do it? How do you write so well? How do you write so well? And the question for you, how you write so well as well. I think it's a, a tremendous writer. She is a published author and she's going to go on and, be, and write even more with all your friends having all sorts of <laughs> <laughs> incidents. Okay, Abigail, thank you very much.